Ah, hello and welcome back. Or if you're new to the channel because you are just interested in this product here, the Onace RV door lock, welcome. My name is Colin. I am the creator behind the Grey Wolf Bike YouTube channel where we do mountain biking, gravel cycling, the sort. And uh, I am also the Grey Wolf RV channel. In fact, the two dovetail together because the RV was purchased to help facilitate making videos on the bike channel. So before I address the what, which is the RV door lock, I first want to address the why. So as mentioned, I film mountain biking and cycling content. And a general rule is if I'm going out for a ride for the day, the last thing that I want in my pockets or hip pack are sharp, pointy objects with serrated edges, essentially keys. So a RV door lock that has an integrated keypad is a significant benefit because that could allow you to leave the keys inside the coach and be able to get access to it or similarly hot hidden around in the area. However, you don't have to be a mountain biker to appreciate those benefits. You might just want to go to the beach for the day and are concerned about perhaps losing your keys in the sand. You might be a paddle boarder or a kayaker and want to go on the water. And again, keys falling into the lake or river would be a, uh, a very poor day to say the least. So having the ability to gain access back into the RV, again, via a keypad is significantly beneficial. However, this particular product does actually go one step further because not only does it have a integrated keypad, it also includes the optional automotive style remote unlock and lock. And I think that's just super cool. A bit of a spoiler alert, the quality of that lock is astoundingly good for a product produced by a company that not only is new to the RV space, but didn't exactly have the best start. And I'll explain why. So this video is being filmed in the summer of 2024. And that's important because there are a couple of videos already out there on YouTube about this particular product, more specifically a earlier version of it. And one glaring omission for anybody who's ever had an RV before is that the original version did not have any way to actually close the door. They omitted, forgot, didn't know, didn't consider to put a little tab so that when you're on the inside of the RV, you can actually close the door. I assume they were assuming that you could just close the RV door um, by using this lever here, but they actually had to go back and redo their tooling or perhaps just redo their manufacturing process and add the little tabs to allow this slight handle to come in and close. It is a solution and it appears to be functional. However, I will admit even still, first and foremost, this is a small perch. And what I do actually plan on or am considering about doing depending on the performance once it's installed is adding a little bit of like a grip tape or maybe even a silicone on the back side such that your fingers don't slip off. If you have any degree of like arthritis and you think that this might be um, difficult for you, then take that into consideration. So would I like to see this be a bit bigger? Yes. And do I think that it looks like a bit of an afterthought? Yes, because it is. However, I don't want that to entirely dismay you from considering this particular product. I have no horse in the race, but I am genuinely enthusiastic about it because overall the quality to me seems excellent. Whether that stands up um, you know, to the test of time, we will find out and I will report back. But the actual silicone here on the, on the uh, number pad feels really, really nice. There is a thoughtful addition of a silicone cover such that if the keypad battery were to ever fail or the electronics on the inside, and you were to have a key hidden somewhere, you can always access the RV. So maybe you keep you know, a spare key in your vehicle. I drive a Ford F-150, they have, or mine has the exterior keypad button. So maybe I keep a, uh, you know, the second uh, key fob in my truck, something like that. There are certainly options. 
I'd like to get your opinion on this in the comments though, because typically with RV door locks, you have your deadbolt, which is what the actual uh, keypad and, and key fob will actuate. That will be the actual deadbolt lock here but it just has a simple turn style lock for the handle. I did email Ones about this and ask them what their thought process in the design consideration was for this. And they said it was for transit such that if you're driving down the road, you can lock the handle and it will act as a secondary benefit. I've given that a lot of consideration as it has been a few weeks since we corresponded. And I personally feel, and again, I would like to get your opinion on this in the comments below, but maybe if I'm storing the RV, I would actually like to have a hard key actuated lock in the handle to provide for a long-term storage theft deterrent. I'm less concerned about that maybe if I'm camping in a public campground as we are here, because I don't, I, well, I don't, not to say I don't think, but it would be fairly obvious if someone was to come by with a crowbar and trying to be breaking into this. So it is good, I think, that they considered this such that if you're bouncing down the road and maybe there's like a little bit of frame flex or something, then this is going to be a secondary system for you. Of course, I always drive and uh, store my trailer with the, uh, with the arm uh, covering the door again in case it was to pop open. But I think if there was a future iteration of this product, I would actually like to see a key lock in here just for long-term storage, not for day-to-day -day use. So taking a closer look at the product, we can see on the back, we have our manual actuating mechanism here for the deadbolt. Again, you might be able to hear this. That's me driving the servo motor because when you are using the key fob or the keypad, it's actually engaging this deadbolt here. However, when you're in the trailer and you're just at night, you don't have to use the key fob. There are some different buttons up here. And what these simply do is they allow you to sort of, you know, set the backlighting, they're backlit. How cool is that? Very nice. The buttons, so setting the combinations. There's a sound beeping that I like and will keep enabled, but can be muted. Interestingly, you can also allow and disallow the actual key fob. This is super, super cool because something that's been in the news a lot lately are auto thefts and people are using those like relay coils, etc. And so this would inherently be susceptible to the same sort of attack. I've never heard of that happening in the RV space. I think the use of key fobs is rare to begin with. So I don't anticipate that to be a problem. However, if you are concerned about that, you can slide it over to the lock. And as I understand it, that will disable the key fob from actually using or activating the unit. So super cool. Set that to the side. We will explore a couple more boxes here. And included in this unit are two, not one, but two <laughs> of these key fobs. Very easy to use, two different size buttons. They don't have any like braille or bumps, but the size should be indicative of what you're activating. This appears to be some sort of metal. It's probably a mild steel, I would assume. Nevertheless, that's solid. This actually surprised me because I thought that it was going to be plastic. And as you may have seen there, I was able to depress the actual button on the back and gain access to the key, which is your secondary backup. Now, which way does this go in? There we go. So very easy to, to again, utilize. You just press this button. So if for whatever reason, the battery in the key fob or in the actual door lock assembly was to, um, was to die, then you can use the hard key and activate the deadbolt that way. So you have that on you. Super cool, you get two of these in the kit. This box of gubbins includes a, oh, that's cool, it includes a tool, which is really nice to see for installation purposes. That is a Allen key. We also have a small Phillips some replacement door strikers. That's nice to see as well. Uh, what looks like a guitar pick, but I think this is actually for accessing a battery compartment, if I'm not mistaken. Clearly, I did not read the instructions. 
and this, I don't know, some hardware, whatever. I'm gonna grab the instructions and get started on removing the old one and installing this guy right here. So let's do it. All right, so let's release that. And on the back here, we have four Phillips screws, nothing on the outside. So that should be fairly simple. We also have the striker plate, which is likely why we have that other one, just in case it doesn't fit in the OEM. And they are also held in to Phillips. So let's get to it. pocket. For what it's worth, I'm not going to miss this OEM door lock. It has the world's tiniest little perch and then only here and here where you actually able to get your fingers behind. So as much as that same one on the Onase product was and is an afterthought. <laughs> this one just wasn't good to begin with, so. There we go. That's that. There we go. That is easy. Let's clean this up for the sake of doing quality work. You may be able to see the internal construction of these doors. You have like a, well, I think it's just a plastic material here, yeah and uh, the foam core that's going to provide your insulation value. There we go. We can see here on the back, the two components are held together with these Allen keys. This is nice to see that the manufacturer has included the tools. It would not be unrealistic for them to simply not. I don't know if that's fully out. Oops. But the fact that they have is just, uh, that's just nice to see. That's good stuff. Makes for a better user experience. And considering the price, so I was able to find a discount code, paid approximately 100 US dollars. I think regular retail price, I want to say was in the 119. Ooh, don't lose that, Colin. But, uh, for the quality again of those key fobs this is this is a, a metal it feels like an aluminum construction very little plastic and much better than what was on there originally although i'm i'm probably be shocked and disappointed for how much those the original one actually costs but i think that this is honestly i think it's really good value now it looks like yes the electric connector is still together so we will be mindful to disconnect this. Let's see here. A little wiggle. There we go. All right, back to the door. Do a test fit first. Very close, but I may need to enlarge the opening just a little bit on the door to get that to fit. I'm not sure if you can tell on camera. It's just making contact here with these posts. So I'm just gonna trim back this area to be able to pop it in. I'm gonna do my best to illustrate exactly what's going on. So we can see there is cutout and recess in here for these gubbins. However, oh, let's get that in there. Let's get my head out of the way. 
you can see this, for about two millimeters, or like an eighth of an inch, these posts are just hitting the, the material on the door frame. So I'm just gonna come in here with a utility knife and just notch this out. That's it, not much. Let's go ahead and mark the spots. Here. Now, a proper utility blade would have been best. However, I did forget that at home. So, I hope I'm not going to destroy my nice knife here, but let's see if this should do the job. Again, I mean, this is very little, little that we're actually dealing with here. And it's worth mentioning on the back, we'll clean this up before final install, there's this huge rubber seal. So where the original seal, as you can see, marked out with this dirt line, in fact, I'll clean this off before I install, this will be sealed, you know, like a full inch above you know, half inch below and all the way over. So from a water ingress perspective, this is actually gonna provide a much better seal than the original one did. Not to say that this was insufficient or poor quality, but it's just nice to see that this is, uh, this is gonna do a very nice job. That is so close. Take a little bit more and I'll join you in a second. All right, so you could probably tell, I took the smallest of pieces off here. My rationale for this, it's not that I'm afraid of cutting into this, there's no concern whatsoever, but should the day come that I go to sell this trailer, unless the Onase doesn't stand up in terms of quality and durability, so if you're interested in finding that out, please consider subscribing because I will provide an update on the channel if that happens, but if I love it, which I hope that I do, and I don't see any reason that I wouldn't, then I can come back in here and I can ins reinstall the original door lock so I don't have to then lose the value that I have added to the trailer because I have not compromised the original ceiling surface here. I haven't gone beyond the coverage of the original door lock. So I'm only doing this just as a future proofing exercise. Let us go and do a dry fit installation here. There we go. I wonder if you can see that. Maybe, maybe not. But you have to trust me, I guess. <laughs> but there we go. It was just catching on those little pins. So we can get a nice flat surface here. But I'll show you on the back side what we have to do now. So I arguably could and should have done this in the first place, but this is why we're taking our time. You can see here, we've got the electrical connector. We have the original installation hole here, but the plastic is blocking off where the new hole is going to be. Because again, remember, this is a different style. Uh, I don't know if this was done intentionally from the manufacturer or not. Um, either way, this is not needed for us. And because the original one is larger than this opening, it wasn't needed to begin with, but I don't know, maybe they did this just as a, a secondary strength or backup, but there's so much ceiling surface on this side that uh, we're gonna go ahead and trim this out. So we'll pull this mechanism back out and uh, maybe I might, uh, nah, that should be fine. Don't have to worry about it, but I'm just gonna finish, clean this up. Go. Super awkward as a right-hander. <laughs> this knife is, in some ways, a bit of my pride and joy. There we go. That's darn good, if you ask me. Got the, uh, the Grey Wolf logo up there. This is a Gerber product, super cool. Uh, I don't make any money off of telling you, but you can customize these. I think it was maybe $10 for them to laser etch it on there. Um, but you can pick all the different hardware that you want. So if you're a knife person, I'm not really, but I appreciate uh, customization and personalization. So there you go. Check out Gerber.
I think that's like their professional series or something like that. There we are. I'm gonna grab my cleaning solution. We'll clean this off. Take your time, do things right. I want to get a nice seal. Don't want to lock in a bunch of dirt. And I'm going to clean the uh, lock itself. Where is it? Right here in front of me. <laughs> there we go. So have this all nice and cleaned off. It's, it's really nice quality rubber too as well. It has somewhat of a, a natural tackiness to it. I'm just trying to clean off these little fibers from the paper towel, but yeah, like a really nice, really nice quality to it there. Make sure we don't get that electrical cable stuck in there. Oh gosh, that's nice come in here with the back side. This is where I was anticipating a little bit of balance work because you don't want to put uh, really any strain on these cables. This actually is a well, partner, a helper, a friend would really come in handy. Let's see, get this all lined up. Whoops, that's why I had extra in my mouth. So what I'm doing, this is my own strategy. Again, I have not read the instructions. I'm starting on the outside and I'm gonna kind of bring it together where I located the Dropped screw. Very nice. There's no grinding or crispiness at all in these threads. So during manufacturing, I don't know if they chase them or not, but again, I'm sort of starting. These ones were fairly loose just to orient things, hold it in place, but I now have a little bit of torque and pressure applied to it and I'm just just bringing that pressure again, sort of bringing it together and you can tell now it all sits really nice and flush. One thing, when you ever get a tool like this, generally speaking, and this is the same for Allen keys as well, is um, the length of the little handle is uh, generally speaking the amount of torque that you can put on it. So I'm not, uh, I'm not reefing on this. This is just enough so that, um, yeah, it's gonna hold it in place. Now, next up, let's install some batteries. All right, so we're gonna use the provided mini tool here. I 
I knew about this and I brought some with me. Ow, that was sharp plastic. And next. I wonder if there's any way to, uh, seems like there's just a bit of slack there. Hmm, that may be intrinsic to the product. It may not. Right now I'm just excited about getting to the uh, final installed version. add something on top of the uh, batteries. If you know me, you know how much I hate stickers. Gone with the wind. So last but not least, this is the original strike plate that came off of it. I may not have even needed to remove the entire plate. The, this was at the top, I believe, last time. Let's see. Yeah, that looks... Original. So that's nice. Yeah, we can just reuse the factory hardware that came out of it. I assume those other strike plates were just to uh, ensure universal fitment. Where are we here? Come on now. Wait a minute. No, this hardware won't go in there because it is sized differently. That's right. Let's use the proper hardware, Colin. So this is going to have a different thread pitch because, shocker, this is a different door lock. Hey. Wait a minute, are the holes even lining up? Yes, they are sort of. I may need to position things slightly differently. I'm gonna try something here. Let's back these off. Yeah, there really was not any room on the bottom of the opening for it to move down, but having a look at how these holes were originally drilled, I'm not entirely sure if this aftermarket lock is going to fit in it. If, yeah, I may be able to just bring it down a smidge. A smidge is all we need. What I'm trying to avoid here is re-drilling or elongating it because there is such a small wall thickness between these Let's see if that's just enough to catch it though. Nice. I don't know if that was a byproduct of the aftermarket door latch, just having a different orientation slash spacing, or if that was a uh, manufacturing with the holes, not sure. But I like that we got there in the end. Very nice. 
still not crazy about this rattling. I may re-explore that. Again, subscribe, please consider subscribing because if I decide if this bothers me, I'm gonna pull this all back apart. I will uh, post a uh, explanation of that video. All right, the last thing to do here is program the key fob. Says ensure safety lock is in the unlocked state. It is administrator password plus the check mark. What is the administrator password? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Then it says press set three times. So that's on the inside. One, two, three. Got some beeping there. Wait for the beep sound and the panels start flashing. I don't see the light on, that's fine. Press any button on the fob. Six, succeed Oni's button illuminates and flashes green three times. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Yeah, sweet. I'll show you there. So lock and unlock. Heck yes. So I took the opportunity off camera to go ahead and program the keypad as well. One interesting thing is that you can actually hide your password in a series of random digits. So for example, let's say you set the code, which is I think a minimum of five digits to one, two, three, four, five. What you can do is you can say, press seven, 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 eight, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And because you did that sequence in there, if someone was standing right next to you, they could be a friend, they could be a stranger that you're just inviting in, whatever. But you can bury your combination in a huge sequence of numbers and still press the check mark and it will still unlock. So that's an extra privacy feature that actually, honestly, I never thought I needed until I learned about it and then now I don't want it any other way. So as I've mentioned already, if you're interested in the long-term review more than the installation tutorial about the product, be sure to subscribe. We've got plenty more videos like this to come and some really cool adventures that I plan on going on. So I hope to see you along with me. Until then, thank you very much for watching. You take care and bye for now.